On the build show today, we're talking low voltage. You have to talk in a low voice when you talk about low voltage. That's right, that's all the wires in your house that aren't carrying high voltage. Now, this is kind of an interesting conversation because many of you commented on my high voltage, my wiring video, Matt, why are you using such thick gauge wiring, my 12-2 wiring, when I've got so many LED lights in my house? And you know, honestly, that's a pretty good criticism. I, I did have to kind of think twice about that. So we're going to get into that a little bit. We're also going to get into the sound system that I'm doing, um, what kind of wire, the panel box. Uh, and I actually have a really cool product that you've probably never seen before called Voltec. Today's video, the low voltage wiring at my house. Let's get going. All right, now when I say low voltage, most of you are thinking two types of wires, some kind of ethernet wiring, which in the past has been maybe cat five, I'm doing cat six at my house, and then coax. And usually you're thinking about some location in the house where there's a low voltage panel box, right? Kind of like your circuit breaker box where all of your electrical wires go. This is the same sort of thing except for low voltage. Now, this is my family room where my TV is going to be. And I, I purposely built a little closet off of here that on my plans is listed as a media closet. That's where all my wiring is going to go to. Now, I did a little bit of a, uh, a Frankenstein on this, meaning I had someone pull all these wires for me um, just on a kind of an hourly basis, but I provided all the wire. Now the main ethernet wire, that's this blue cable. This is often what we think of when we think of low voltage wiring. This is a cat six wire. It has four stranded pairs in there. And I can turn that into an internet jack, a place to bring wired internet anywhere in my house. I can also use that uh, for cameras and other types of internet type devices, let's say. Now you're also gonna notice I have a little bit of this black wire here. Now this is coax. It's a little bit old school tech and not that many years ago, anywhere we had a cat five wire, we would also run coax. Now I'm not doing that at my house, but I am foregoing the traditional cable company where I've got fiber in my neighborhood. So all I'm gonna do is run a fiber line in and then most of my house, of course, like yours is gonna be wireless, but I do want a couple wired locations. So let's talk about that and where that's gonna be. So in my house, most of my um, entertainment consumption these days is internet-based. YouTube TV, Netflix, Amazon Prime. And I really only have one TV location in my current house, and that's what I'm doing here. I have a TV location right here, and I'm, I found a really cool TV. No, no uh, affiliation with these guys, but Samsung makes a really cool TV called the Frame TV that sits really flush to the wall. And I just realized this, so I don't have it in yet, but that TV requires a separate cable to go from the TV location all the way back to where your media center is gonna be. And you have to get that actually from Samsung. So I need to order that. It'll be a 30 meter cable, and that's gonna have all my HDMI locations back there. That'll also have power to the TV. And one cool thing about that TV is when it's off, it looks like a picture on the wall. And in fact, it'll run on low power and you can get a subscription to their service. So I'm gonna show Monet's or uh, you know, some other famous painter on the wall there. And it won't look like a traditional TV location. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now in the rest of the house, I'm running specific locations where I might have a computer plugged in. Like underneath my stairs here, I'll have a desktop. And so I'm running a Cat6 wire in uh, a home run fashion, meaning from the panel box to here. And this could be if I have a desktop machine plugged in there all the time. Now for uh, all the ethernet, for internet, for routing, all that kind of thing, I found a really cool system. A really friend, a uh, good friend of mine named John helped me kind of specify everything. And he got me turned on to Unify uh, or Ubiquity Networks. And I'm gonna be using their dream machine in the house. So I'm gonna do a cabinet that will mount on the wall right where my low voltage panel is that will have different units. I'm actually using a 19 unit sized panel. So I'll basically have 19 unit slots in there where all of my Ubiquity Networks uh, cameras will go to, uh, my router, all those things, as well as, stay tuned for a future video, I'll show you this in the future, but I'm gonna have uh, uh, uninterruptible power supply 
and a couple other cool things. So we'll show you that when I finalize. But that's also the place in the house where I've run all of my speakers back to. Now I've got a few of them wired now in the ceiling and on the outside of the house, but I've decided to use Sonos in my house. I mentioned this earlier in a video. I've got some Sonos in my office. I have a pair of their speakers in my house and I've had really good success. It's just a really easy tech. I also like that I can pretty much do it myself. Now they also make an architectural line of speakers. So I'm gonna be using some built-in speakers from them as well as some products like the Arc, which is a really cool sound bar that has some special quality. So stay tuned for a video, video on that. I'll show you some more specifics on that. But between the Sonos system and the Ubiquity, which is gonna run on my cameras and my uh, low voltage, I've got a pretty well-priced system and I feel confident enough, I'm certainly not a tech guy, I'm not, a, I'm not in the IT business, but I feel like with just a little bit of help, I can terminate all that and I can hook all that up in my house. Um, now, one other cool thing that I've got, Kohler, you, you may have seen my previous video about some of the Kohler equipment that I've got in my house. They came out with a really cool speaker tile. So in my master shower, right near my shower head, basically right at, at ear level, I've got two Kohler tile speakers that will bring sound right in there. And my Kohler DTV Plus uh, digital controller screen in the shower can, can control all that so that I can change podcasts, I can change music, whatever I want if I'm gonna sit in the uh, shower and get a steam for 20 minutes, that sort of thing. Now, before we move on from low voltage, I wanna meet you back in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you a really cool product that you've probably not seen before. All right, I said earlier when I published my high voltage, my electrical video, I wired my whole house in 12.2 so that I could do 20 amp circuits. But you know, several of you commented, which really made me think, when I'm doing LED lighting, why do I need that fat 12-2 piece of copper in there? And it's interesting, you know, right after that, I found a, a, a company based here out of Austin called Voltec, and they make a product that's a little different than this, but I've done these a lot in the past. This is a, uh, I think Leviton makes this, there's probably some other manufacturers. This is a, a regular uh, 110 outlet that also has some version of USB. This happens to be USB-C at my house. Uh, currently, I have several of these with USB-As, and these are great for charging your GoPro and your phone, that sort of thing. But anywhere else you don't have one of these, you're gonna use a small brick for your phone. Now, when it comes time to turn in your, to plug in your laptop though, you typically need one of these big bricks. If you were to plug your laptop into this, there wouldn't be enough juice to plug it in. That's why you got it. Even with this, you still need to use your big brick. Now check this out. This company based out of Austin has a solution that I thought was really cool. This is called Voltex. And this is a low voltage wired and powered USB outlet. They currently make them in a dual USB where you've got a USB A and a USB C. And everywhere you have one of these, believe it or not, you have enough juice, not just to charge your phone, which certainly you could, but you even have enough juice if you plug your laptop in here to eliminate the brick because this has enough power to supply it to your laptop. Now here's how the system works. They make this unit here, which is the power conversion. This is uh, this demo model right here is just plugged into an outlet. So it's getting 110 power. It's then converting that into DC, direct current. And then in the back of this, you're gonna see that it's got a bunch of these plugs. This one is a 12, this one has the capacity to do 12 of these outlets. Now we actually plug this one in to show you, check this out, that now with just a USB-C to USB-C, my MacBook Pro, this is actually Alex's on my team that he does a lot of editing on, and this is the big one. Look, it's charging this laptop straight off here. So now I could put these on my desktop, I can put these uh, on the side of my master bed, all those places I wouldn't need a brick, I can plug in enough juice to even power a laptop with either a USB-C or a USB-A outlet. I thought that was kind of a cool system. The other cool thing is this is rack mounted, so this will fit in my low voltage rack and I can have my UPS, my uh, power supply, battery backup attached to this so that I could potentially run a couple hours, or even if I had a really big one, maybe even longer, maybe even into days if I had a really big battery attached to this, 
I think that brings a measure of resilience, which is kind of cool. But I also honestly just like the convenience of these. So this 12 unit model, I'm putting um, an outlet here in my kitchen. I'm putting two of them at my wife's desk. I'm doing two at my kid's desk. I'm doing three or four at my desk and I'm putting two on either side of my bedroom table. And those outlets, I'm gonna put a little higher so that I could just pull my vanity back, not my vanity, my sideboard, side table rather, and plug in my phone and my laptop on the side of the bed. Kind of a cool system. This whole thing, you could wire yourself with all the parts. We're talking about a thousand bucks or so uh, for all this. And the cool thing is this wire is a thin gauge wire. This is a low voltage wire, pretty inexpensive. You know, this is probably pennies per foot compared to that copper wire that I used for my high voltage, which is very expensive. Now these guys are coming out with a six um, capacity to do six of these and an even smaller power supply. So stay tuned for that, but I'll put a link in the description uh, for them in full disclosure. Uh, I thought the system was so cool. I wanted to put in my house. They gave me these materials to do for my house, which I thought was pretty cool. Now this did bring up another thought for me though, which is I wonder how long it's gonna be before all the LED lighting in my house could also be run uh, by this type of thin DC direct current wire. There's no big commercial outfit doing that now. I suspect that will be in the future, um, but I appreciated you guys commenting on my video uh, about how uh, it was a little strange that I used really thick copper wire when 14 gauge would have worked just fine. I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna have an internet connection to the house but I'm not doing cable TV or any of those kinds of connections. Most, most of the time, as I said earlier, I'm, can, I'm consuming through internet. However, I did want to watch broadcast TV potentially at times. Uh, and so, and believe it or not, I'm gonna put an old school antenna on the side of my house. This is just a $50 model that I got at the local home center, nothing special. But I found a cool website, antennaweb.org. I typed in my address. And it turns out all the TV stations in Austin, where I am, are basically due west from my house. So on the westward side of my house, I ran a coax cable out through the soffit, and I'm actually gonna mount this underneath my soffit and directionally facing straight towards those TV towers, which are in West Austin. Now in my house, I just have a cheap antenna for my TV that's mounted inside on the wall, and I get a darn good signal. So I have a feeling with going outside and pointing it in the correct direction, I'm gonna get terrific service. And then this antenna will actually go into my rack mounted TiVo. I'm an old school TiVo fan. And this antenna into my TiVo means that I can um, catch a local sports broadcast of the Longhorns uh, playing a football game. I can also tape my local NBC affiliate every night because my wife loves watching the 5.30 national news and the local news through antenna so I can fast forward through those commercials. So believe it or not, even today, these antennas, especially with digital TV, means I've had a great broadcast signal and I don't have to pay anything. Hey guys, it's been a week or so on the low volt and I had a couple of other epiphanies that I wanted to show you. Uh, you know, this is my first time building a house for myself in my 25 years of building. I've had a lot of thoughts rumbling around. So a couple additional things I wanted to mention. First off, my D mark, that is the wire to the outside is right here. Basically these three wires, I've got coax, I've got fiber, and I've got cat 6E. These are running from the outside where in my case, uh, AT&T fiber is gonna pick them. They run all the way across the house to my media closet, which is on the other side of the house. But what happens if I have a cut here? I need a new D mark, whatever. I need to fish a new wire. I thought, you know, it'd be really cheap insurance to add some conduit. So this conduit right here, which I'll end up cutting off and strapping uh, to the outside right here. And then I put a little OD access box. This is my pantry, by the way. So this is not a, you know, not a main room of the house. I put this little OD access box so I could pop this off and have access to this, to this bottomless pipe. 
This runs all the way up into my top attic. We'll go up there and show you where that runs in a minute. But that gives me the ability to add another D mark, to add a wire for whatever. Okay, so my panel still looks a little messy right now, but you're gonna notice each one of these wires has a label on it. What happened was my buddy Lee helped me tone all these out and each one of these wires I've got toned and labeled so I know exactly where each one of these goes. And then I'm gonna bundle these up and once we get a little closer, I'll show you how we're gonna actually uh, cut these off, get all the uh, keystones in, all that good stuff. I've got a rack that mounts in here. I've got some Sonos amps. I love that this house has a good bit of technology and yet it's not over teched, right? I don't have some crazy system that's gonna be hard to use or hard to manage. I'm using Halo and their Halo app for my lighting and lighting control. I'm using Sonos for my speakers and my volume. I've got, uh, I'll show you in the future what I'm doing for, cause I don't have any of that equipment now but I've got uh, Ubiquiti systems that I'm using for all of my uh, internet throughout the whole house. Um, I'm gonna use their dream machine. But basically, that's the stuff I wanted to show you. I will mention one last thing. You saw four speaker wires that look like 16, two wires back there. And you're gonna notice I've got four windows in my master that all have a wire to them. I'm gonna do motorized blinds in my master bedroom, uh, just on a switch, not on an app. All right guys, final thoughts and let me wrap this up. You know, I was trying to be really thoughtful about my low voltage on the house so that I would meet my family's needs when I moved in, but also knowing that, gosh, I've already got teenagers that are gonna be out of the house uh, in a short period of time, that I'll be able to meet those future needs of an age in place uh, kind of house. But one final thought, you know, when it comes to technology, we need to be really cautious that we don't do things that are hard to undo later. You know, for instance, I'm in my master here, and it wasn't that many years ago that I had a client that said, Matt, you know, I really love running my sound in my house off an iPod. And so I want you to put iPod docks built into the wall. And so we built one into the sheetrock in his master. We built one into uh, a stone wall in his uh, kind of patio space and several other places in the house. And literally he moved in and six months later, Apple went from that wide, you know, the, I forget what they call that, the 12-pin connection, something like that, that real wide connection to the lightning connection. And it was immediately like, oh, shoot. <laughs> you know, I've got a brick in my wall now. So that was something I really wanted to avoid. And honestly, that's one of the things that really drove me to doing a solution, number one, that I could do a lot of the work myself, or if I hire someone, great, but it's understandable. And so that's what I liked about the Ubiquity Networks uh, system. I think I can install most of that myself. I really like that about Sonos and that really pushed me to do that because it's pretty affordable. Uh, I could grow the system as I had more money, um, but it's also super intuitive, super easy. I think we're always gonna be able to run things off our phone, whether it's Bluetooth uh, or Wi-Fi or some, one of those technologies but I really did want to put wires in enough locations, especially as inexpensive as it was. I used two boxes of Cat6 wire. I bought way too much coax because I only ran it in three places. And that's really the only low voltage cost I had besides a, a inexpensive on cue panel. Uh, anyways, I'll put a link in the description for the, some of the parts and materials I used. And if you'd like me to get into more depth on the install for what I did with the Sonos system or hooking up the Ubiquity networks, uh, the, the uh, Wi-Fi access points, uh, the camera system. Let me know, I'm curious if that's something that, uh, that I should get into. I don't often get into technology which changes. I try to be as timeless as possible uh, in my builds, especially when it comes to structure, insulation, air sealing. We've only got one good chance to do that. But I think that there is a, um, a case against not putting wiring in and saying, oh, everything's wireless. Because that's not entirely true. And a lot of the wireless systems uh, tend to be um, not super reliable. They work sometimes, they don't always work. So knowing that I've got a cable in the wall, which is really the best technology we have today, and uh, you know, Cat5 we used for years, now we're on Cat6. There is another cable beyond that. I didn't think it was worth going up to that. Uh, anyways, guys, I really appreciate your time. I'll put a link to uh, some of the parts and materials. Uh, big thanks to Voltex for donating this system for my house. I was really excited about that. 
I'll show you more of this on the final, but if you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.